drugs and alcohol, especially alcoholism, affects not only the person who becomes addicted to it, but it affects everyone around them. It has lasting effects on society. Just having effect on the people around you will go on to affect them for the rest of their lives. I wanted to tell you guys something today. And this is not something I've shared with anyone. My mother and father had me when they were very young. My mother was 17 when she had me and my father was barely over the age of 20. And this was in 1980. And my mother and father were both on their way to becoming alcoholics. They liked to party and drink and alcohol led my mother to walk out and abandon me at the age of three. She dropped me off at my grandmother's home. <clears throat> now I'm realizing why I've never told this story before. She dropped me off at my grandmother's home and did not come back for three years. And my father was still in his party days out drinking and, and, and partying and my grandmother and grandfather said, you're not going to raise a child like that. So they took me from my father and they raised me for the first few years of my life. My mother would come back around when I was around six or seven years old and try to get back into my life, but she was a full-blown alcoholic at this time. And she was only given visitation rights to see me every other weekend. <clears throat> my father was now living with us at my grandparents' house but he wasn't much of a father figure when I was a young man. I remember sitting outside every other weekend waiting for my mother to come and pick me up. She was supposed to pick me up on a Friday afternoons at 6 o'clock. And when I got home from school, because even though my mother wasn't really in my life from a very young boy, there is no doubt about the relationship between a boy and his mother. Boys are mama's boys. That's, that's just the way it is. It's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in, in, in boys. The same way like girls are daddy's girls. But I would sit outside and there would be many weekends when my mother would be too drunk to come and pick me up on Friday afternoon and I would just sit there and wait and wait and wait. And my mother, my grandmother told me she had a really tough time coming out and telling me that my mom just wasn't coming. And then due to the alcohol lifestyle that my mom was living, the alcoholism, she ended up with men who were also alcoholics. And two of those men that she ended up having extensive relationships with were extremely abusive. I'm talking about not verbally abusive and kind of physically abusive, slapping her around. No, I'm talking about putting her in the hospital abusive. So even on the weekends when she would come and pick me up, and I had a younger brother as well that my mother had while she was gone for those few years of my life. So he's about five years younger than me. When I was around 10, 11, 12, 13 years old, I would go to my mother's house. And a lot of times, a lot of my memories of my childhood were with my mother were me trying to protect my younger brother from seeing our mother get her you know what, beat for the entire 72 hours that I spent with her. And sometimes having to watch her go to the hospital and almost lose her life on two occasions. The effect that that's left on me for the rest of my life is not something that can be fixed. You can't fix things like that. You, you can't. It does irreparable damage irreparable damage to both me and my brother. This continued on me watching my father fall deeper into alcoholism, my mother deeper into alcoholism, watching her get abused every other weekend that she did actually come and pick me up and trying to give my brother some type of normality in his life because this is all he saw. He lived with them 24 hours a day, seven days a week until I was about the age of 15 and I decided I had had enough and I went to the man who was abusing my mother and may Allah forgive me, I put a gun to his face and said, if you ever put your hand on my mother again, you will not live another day and you need to pack your stuff and leave and never come back. 
And alhamdulillah, he left and he never came back. And my mother, I tried slowly starting to get her some help to get off of the alcohol. It was a struggle. She relapsed many times over until in 2004, she was diagnosed with cancer, with stomach cancer and liver cancer that eventually spread throughout her entire body. And for those past couple of years, through 2004 to 2007, me and my mother started to build a bond and a better relationship. And I started to feel like I actually had a mother again because she would call me every single day asking me how I was, if I was eating okay. She would call me even though she knew I was a Muslim and I was doing my best to give her da'wah. She would still call me on holidays like Christmas and she would say, I know you don't practice it, but I'm your mother and I can call you any day I want. And that's just reality, it's my mom, and I'm always gonna answer the phone. And then finally, she entered into terminal illness with cancer. And I was at this time living in Maryland, in College Park, trying to go and see her as much as I could, but then I got a phone call in the winter of 2007 that your mother is in her last stages of cancer because she kept telling me she was okay. She's okay. Then she went to the hospital and I thought, okay, she's in the hospital again. My brother called me and said, no, if you want to see your mom, come and see you, come and see her. And the funny thing, my brother told me, he's like, you know, he said, because they had sent her into hospice care and put her on a lot of morphine, and a lot of pain medication just to ease the last few days of her life. And my brother called me and he said, look, you need to come today because the past two days I've went to see mom and she keeps thinking I'm you and she's asking for you and she's asking for you and she won't she won't shut up about you so I drove from Washington DC down to back to South Carolina and I went to my mother's bedside and I stayed with her for two days and I was showing her pictures of my oldest son saying that this is your grandson because she had not got to see him yet he wasn't very old at the time And finally, my mother, on a Monday morning, she was laying in my arms and she kept looking at me and she just kept saying to me over and over again, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, this is all I could get her to say. And I kept trying to tell her, it's okay, I forgive you, it's, it's done, it's past. And the very last words my mother ever said to me when she died in my arms on a Monday afternoon in 2007 was that she was sorry for the damage she had done to me in my life and, it, and I lost my mother at the age of 44. At the age of 44 in 2007, alcoholism destroyed my mother's life and eventually gave her cancer that would kill her. And I'm still struggling with a father who's a recovering alcoholic, who's now in ill health. I'm actually flying home to see him today. He's actually in a medically induced coma as we speak. Um, he had a stroke, he had spinal surgery the other day and he had a stroke on the operating table and he's under medically induced coma and that's why I'm flying as soon as I leave here so they can take him out of the coma only when I'm there. Because my father has many illnesses now because of the abuse that his body has sustained over 30 years of being an alcoholic. And the reason I've told you this is to show you, <laughs> I'm 37 years old now. I remember these memories as if they happened yesterday. I have nightmares about these memories of watching my mother getting beat, not knowing if she's going to live or not, not knowing if I would ever see my mother again. Now, every time my dad gets sick, wondering if I'm ever going to see him again. We didn't have the greatest relationship growing up. The best relationship me and my father have had is since I've been a Muslim. And I've been trying to give him da'wah, make dua for my father. When I leave here today, if, if he wakes up from this coma, I'm going to be begging him to take shahada. I just want you to know that alcoholism and drug addiction does not just affect you. If you want to go and destroy yourself, that's one thing. That's one thing. But when you become addicted, these intoxicants, this drug, this alcohol, it affects everyone around you. And it affects them for the rest of their life.